Man, this is gonna be a fun video to make. <laughs> um, I definitely encourage all of you guys to grab a camera and react to this video um, because it's gonna be, there's gonna be some fun little, uh, little unpopular opinions in here. And of course, if you do, follow me on Instagram right here and DM me um, that, hey, I reacted the video so I can watch it and have a good laugh at people screaming at my opinions. Um, all right, let's get into the video. What is up, Thrill Seekers? So today I'm going to be sharing to you guys my top 20 roller coasters that I have been on. Um, these are only coasters that I have been on. At the moment, I have ridden 151 different roller coasters, um, and these are just 20 of them that I think are my favorite. Um, I rank my favorite roller coasters based on mainly two things. Number one, if I could only ride one roller coaster, um, what roller coasters would I ride. Um, that's how I get my number one roller coaster, and then I say besides that one, which one, and then I get my number two, and so on and so forth. Um, and that's kind of how I rank mainly, um, but also I can kind of change them around based on re-rideability. Um, if I went to a park and I rode this coaster a whole bunch, um, then it's definitely more fun than a different coaster, um, in my opinion. So yeah, that's the main things that I look for um, are re-rideability and if I could only ride one coaster what would it be um, and that's really how I came up with this list. There are going to be a lot of these types of videos coming out very soon, um, mainly because my computer is not working at the moment, which really sucks, um, and lots of the footage from POVs and things along those lines is either on that computer or only accessible by that computer. Um, I am using my mom's computer right now to edit this video. Um, and it unfortunately does not have like a USB port or a port to plug in on the SD card for my GoPro. Um, and I can also not get the videos off of my POV glasses because um, that needs a USB port and I can't go out and get an adapter for it because, you know, Corona. Um, and I can't go to a park and make a new video because, you know, Corona. So I'm just going to be making a whole bunch of little like favorites video um, or least favorites videos. Um, so comment down below some ideas for those. Also, if I don't mention a coaster on the list and you're like, have you ridden that? And also, why isn't it on the list? Um, then also comment those coasters down below and I will respond saying um, this is why it's not on the list. But I'm going to be doing five honorable mentions on this video before I get into it. So let's get into the honorable mentions. So these honorable mentions are just basically me saying this is a coaster that's really good and that I want to mention and give some credit but it didn't make it on the list or coasters that people are going to be like, have you ridden this? And I need to be like, yes and this is why I didn't like it as much um, as maybe some other people would. So um, my first honorable mention is Manta at SeaWorld Orlando. It did not quite make it onto this list. Um, pretty close. I absolutely love flying coasters. It just is not good enough quite to be on this list. Um, so yeah, that's not on there. Um, another one is Twisted Timbers, which a lot of people are probably sad about. I'm not a huge fan of um, super strong ejector airtime. That's also why Wicked Cyclone is also not on this list. Um, but of course, like floater airtime, stuff like that is something that I love. So the big three airtime hills are great, um, but the second half of the coaster is I don't really like, honestly. Um, the lap bar really slams into my thighs um, and the shin guards are super uncomfortable and it's just not, it's not a coaster that um, could be in my top 20. My next honorable mention is Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast at Six Flags St. Louis, specifically at Six Flags St. Louis, the one at um, Over Texas is not as good in my opinion. Um, it's way more rattly and it doesn't give as much air time or hang time and stuff like that. But the one at Six Flags St. Louis is wonderful, um, but it did not quite make it onto this list just because mainly it's, it's just a shorter ride. 
Another character that did not make it on the list is Top Throw Dragster, mainly um, because of the reasons that um, Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast didn't make it either, mainly just because it's short. Um, it's a great coaster and something that I love riding, but it just is not a long ride. Um, and that's definitely something that I look for in rides, is rides that go on what feels like forever. Um, and yeah. That's, that's not Top Throw Dragster at all. My final honorable mention um, is something that a lot of people will be sad about, and that is um, a coaster that is at my home park, Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, and that is Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster. It did not make it on this list. Um, it's not really my type of coaster. I like more graceful rides that more focus on um, floater and flowjector airtime, um, and Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster is not that type of ride. Um, I absolutely love the coaster. It's just one, I, I mean, it's, it's short, so that's also a thing. Um, and the collars kind of dig into your shoulders. Um, and it's just not really one of my favorite rides. I actually like Superman Krypton Coaster more, um, but Superman Krypton Coaster isn't on this list either. So yeah, um, but anyways, now let's get into my top 20. Alrighty, starting at number 20 is Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. Um, it is, in my opinion, of course, the best coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. I would say that most people would agree with that. Um, the reason why it's not higher on the list is mainly just because the elements are not as good as they could be. Um, well, I think that they did really the best job that they could with the land that they had, um, but other coasters have way better elements. Of course, the drop is wonderful. I actually think that um, the drop of the next coaster that I'm gonna mention is a little bit better, and lots of people would very much disagree with that. Um, but um, the drop is great, um, the inversion is great, and the drop off the quarry wall is really good, um, but it's just not something that deserves a higher place. But of course, it is in my top 20 coasters, so I love it, I give it um, probably a 10 out of 10 just because I love riding it over and over again. The night ride is wonderful, so good. Um, and yeah, absolutely love Iron Rattler, but there are reasons why it's not higher on the list. Number 19 is Griffin at, um, uh, Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Now, people who caught it, I said that um, I like the drop of the next coaster after Iron Rattler better than Iron Rattler's drop. Yes, I do like the drop, um, especially in the back row of Griffin, better than the drop of Iron Rattler. Lots of people are going to scream at that. Um, <laughs> the reason why is just because it gives more airtime, in my opinion. I think that the restraints are a little bit more freeing, especially for airtime. Um, and the drop is steeper, and especially in the back row, it pulls you over a lot. Um, and overall, I just think it's a better coaster. It has um, a little bit more interesting elements in terms of um, Iron Rattler kind of gets boring at some parts versus Griffin, which in my opinion isn't really a one-trick pony. I think that the inversions are great. Um, the splashdown is great. It has two airtime-filled drops, which I love, um, and that is why it definitely deserves a spot in my top 20. Number 18 is a coaster right here in Texas, which is better than Iron Rattler. Lots of people are going to be mad. That is Steel Eel at, um, at, uh, where is it? Why am I drawing a blank? Oh, SeaWorld San Antonio. Um, I absolutely love Steel Eel, mainly just because of the airtime that you get on it, especially in the back row. You get wonderful flowjector airtime, which really gives me that stomach feeling that I love. Um, I love the stomach feeling and I love graceful rides. That's definitely two things that I love um, in coasters, and I also love long rides that I mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, that, that, um, that is really all three. Um, it has the, well, I guess it's not really graceful, um, but it does definitely have a lot of, um, flowjector airtime that gives you that stomach feeling, and it's a relatively 
longer ride than a couple other coasters. I think it's a little bit longer than Iron Rattler, but I could be totally wrong with that. Um, so correct me in the comments. But anyways, I love Steel Eel. It's great. Um, definitely something that I love just jumping back in line for and riding over and over again. The next ride on this list um, is Hang Time at Knott's Berry Farm. Um, Hang Time is a wonderful coaster. I love Hang Time, and I think that it gets underrated by a lot of people. Um, the reason why I love it so much is it does definitely, of course, give you a lot of hang time. It's super graceful, which is something that I love, and it really gives you the feeling that you're just gliding on the track. It's super, super, super smooth, um, at least in the front row. In the back row, not so much, but in the front row, um, which is definitely the best row in my opinion. Um, it's wonderful. I mean, there's not really, you don't really feel like you're enclosed in anything, um, just because the train doesn't really have many barriers on the side or in the front, um, which other coasters do. Um, and yeah, so really all you see is just air and track, and you just feel like you're gliding along the track. Um, the vertical lift hill is something that scares a lot of people, and it's super fun and pretty unique. Um, and overall, great coaster. I absolutely love hang time. So number 16 is a roller coaster that um, I think is probably the most underrated coaster that I have ever been on, and that is Screamin' Eagle um, at Six Flags St. Louis. Screamin' Eagle is a wonderful coaster, um, and not many people talk about it, like, ever, um, which I think more people should. Um, I love Screamin' Eagle, it's a great coaster, um, it has so much airtime. Every single hill gives you that stomach feeling that I love. Um, it's a pretty long ride, just when you think that it's going to be over, um, it keeps going, which is great in my opinion, um, and overall, it's just a great ride. Definitely something that I love riding, and something that people overlook. Um, which is a um, reason why I'm like complimenting it um, and saying it's definitely the un most underrated coaster um, that I've ever been on. So, love Screaming Eagle so much. Number 15 is my fourth favorite roller coaster at Cedar Point, and that is Maverick. Lots of people just went, <gasps> Uh, what? Um, yeah, so Maverick is my fourth favorite coaster at Cedar Point. Um, it's definitely better than some other coasters like, for example, Top Throw Dragster. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil um, what my number three is because I know that it will surprise some people. Um, but um, it is not as high as some other people put it, mainly because of the restraints um, that really dig into your thighs. Um, but really, overall, the ride is great, the inversions are great, the launch is super forceful. Um, I guess technically both launches are pretty forceful. Um, and it's a super whippy ride, which is definitely a ride that normally I don't really like, um, but I actually really like Maverick. It's also super long. Um, it's definitely a super long ride um, and has some great scenery around it in some portions. Yeah, overall, I love Maverick. It's, it's great. Number 14 is actually a ride that I was not, unfortunately, able to ride last time I went to this park, and that is um, X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. I think I just heard somebody, like, fall down the stairs. Probably one of the dogs. Um, but anyways, X2 is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful ride. Um, I love X2. It is great. Um, I rode it twice, um, whenever I was able to ride it. it. Unfortunately, like I said, it was closed the last time I went to Six Flags Magic Mountain, so I didn't get to ride it. But, um, the time before, the first time I was ever went to, uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain, I rode it, I believe, twice, and that was just because the lines were so long. Um, and also because I wanted to ride, like, every other ride, and there's so many rides there. Um, so it was kind of difficult to do. But, um, it was a great ride. Um, I love how intense it is at some parts and graceful it is at others. Um, it's super unique. Um, really, there's nothing else like it in the U.S., and there's only a few other coasters like it, um, in the world. So, overall, great ride. Um, 
really smooth for an arrow, in my opinion. Um, I only rode kind of towards the front, like I said, um, and it was pretty smooth. So overall, great ride. And yeah, let's move on to my number 13 spot. Number 13 is, in my opinion, the best coaster at this park. It is American Thunder at Six Flags St. Louis. I absolutely love GCIs. It's my third favorite manufacturer, in my opinion, um, mainly just because all of the rides um, from GCI, in my opinion, are awesome um, versus some other manufacturers where it's not quite like it. My favorite, my favorite manufacturer is... Um, is Intamin, my second favorite is B&M, and my third favorite is um, GCI, something that I might actually make a video on coming up soon. Um, but anyways, love GCI, and this is another great GCI. Um, American Thunder definitely um, combines kind of laterals and whippiness and kind of craziness with some more calm little bunny hops that of course give you that stomach feeling that I love. Um, and it is another definite, um, definite example of how a small and compact ride can um, still pack a big punch. Now coming to my number 12 spot, which is my third favorite coaster at Cedar Point. Um, and lots of people will probably be like, what? Um, it is Gatekeeper. Yes, I love Gatekeeper. Um, it is super rewritable, super graceful, um, but still super, um, fun in my opinion. A lot of people are not big fans of graceful rides. Um, most coaster enthusiasts are more into... Um, I guess more intense rides and rides that really try to like throw you out of your seat and I'm not really that type of coaster enthusiast. Um, I love graceful rides and Gatekeeper is definitely like the graceful ride of graceful rides. Um, it's super graceful and super fun. Um, the head chopper elements are great um, and super awesome for pictures as well. And overall, I absolutely love Gatekeeper. Definitely something that I am super excited to just marathon a whole bunch of times. Um, every time, I mean, I've only been to Cedar Point once and I marathoned it so many times. Um, and if I go to bed, uh, go again, not go to bed. <laughs> and if I go again, I'll definitely do it um, a whole bunch of times too. So yeah, great coaster. Definitely underrated in my opinion. My number 11 coaster is um, the best coaster in Texas, in my opinion, and that is New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. I love New Texas Giant. Um, it's a great coaster, and it kind of gets overlooked when people talk about Iron Rattler or Wonder Woman Golden Lasso coaster. Um, and I disagree. I think that it's better than both of those. Um, and one of the reasons is because it's graceful. Um, well, at least more graceful. Um, it's more graceful and it also has a lot of floater and flowjector airtime, which again gives you that stomach feeling that I love. Um, and yeah, overall, it's a great coaster. Um, RMC definitely knocked it out of the park with their first ever coaster, and in my opinion, it's kind of started to go down from there, um, but then in the recent years, it's definitely picked up with Steel Vengeance as well as um, Iron Gwazi, which I think even might be better than Steel Vengeance. Oh, snap. Um, but that's just an assumption. I've never been on Iron Gwazi because no one has, so we'll see. Um, but anyways, I absolutely love New Texas Giant. The drop is wonderful. Um, it's probably one of my favorite coaster drops that I have ever been on. It definitely gives you so much airtime, especially in the back row, and especially if you get some room on the lap bar. Um, I have gotten relatively close to standing airtime on it, um, and it's just awesome. It's such a good drop, such a good coaster, definitely packs in a lot of elements um, that are overall great. The overbank turns are super fun, um, all of the airtime moments are super fun, and yeah, I absolutely love the ride. Now at number 10, something that just barely is edging out um, New Texas Giant, and that is Tatsu at Six Flags um, Magic Mountain. 
Um, I love Tatsu. It is, of course, my favorite flying coaster. Um, I've only been on two, Tatsu and Manta at SeaWorld Orlando. Um, and I love both of them, but of course Tatsu is way better. Um, so yeah, I love Tatsu. I keep saying I love Tatsu, I love Tatsu, I love Tatsu. But I do, I really love Tatsu. Um, it's super graceful with some intense moments, especially that pretzel loop, which is absolutely insane. Um, it's a great element, definitely. I think it's my favorite inversion um, that I've ever been on. Um, the pretzel loop is, and yeah, it's, it's just great. I absolutely love it. Number nine is, in my opinion, the best GCI, at least, that I have been on, um, and that is Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. Um, I love Ghost Rider. It's so, so insanely fun. Um, it is, it's, it's just great. It's a great coaster. Um, I'm super excited to get on more GCIs like it. Um, the new coaster at SeaWorld San Antonio, um, what's it called, Texas Stingray, that looks relatively, like, similar in terms of combining laterals, um, and some airtime moments, and I really hope that that kind of builds up to be similar to Ghost Rider. Um, but more about Ghost Rider, I love the airtime moment, especially after um, the mid-course break run. I don't know if it's still a mid-course or if they changed it to not be one um, anymore, but yeah, that kind of little turnaround type of thing, that little flat turnaround, um, right after that it goes down and that is definitely the best element on the ride in my opinion. Um, but it has great airtime moments. I wish that there were a couple more, um, but of course it does focus on laterals a little bit more than it does airtime, which I think it should be flipped. Um, and that's not why, that's why it's not like in my top five coasters, but I still love it. It's in my top 10 um, and it's overall a wonderful ride. Number eight is a coaster that is definitely, definitely, definitely the best at Six Flags in New England, and that is Superman the Ride. It was actually my 100th coaster, so it kind of holds a special place in my heart. Um, I can see if I can get a picture of me on the ride holding like the 100th sign up. Um, and yeah, it's just a great roller coaster. Um, I absolutely love it. It is definitely a coaster that packs in a lot of airtime um, and a lot of speed, which I love. Um, it's relatively similar to Millennium Force in some of the, like in kind of the general concept, except Millennium Force is taller and faster, so that's why it's better. Um, I sound like a GP, but yeah. Um, anyways, I absolutely love um, I absolutely love Superman the Ride. It's a great coaster, and it is definitely something that 100% deserves a spot in my top uh, 8. Yeah, my top 20 coasters, and even top 10. Number 7 is my favorite coaster at Six West Magic Mountain, and that is Twisted Colossus. Um, I really love this ride, mainly because of the re-rideability of it. Um, it is definitely a coaster that I just love riding over and over and over and over again. Um, and I think I rode it like five, six times in a row. Um, last time I went to Six Flags Magic Mountain, um, and kind of just hoping for a duel, we ended up getting kind of two. Um, one pretty much perfect duel and another pretty close duel, um, enough where like we were able to see the train. It was kind of like this, um, and the other one was more like 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 this type of thing um so yeah overall great coaster super rewritable like i said um the airtime that it packs in is great i love the um like zero g stall on the green side definitely one of my favorite um inversions and it really adds to it when there's another train kind of going under um and overall great ride um, super fun, of course, even when it doesn't duel, it's super great, but the dueling aspect, um, definitely does make it a little bit better, and if it did duel every time, I think it would even be a little bit higher on my list, but it doesn't, um, so please fix that, Six Flags, um, but anyways, yeah, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love Twisted Colossus 
great coaster. And now let's move on to number six. Number six is um, the first B&M Hyper on this list. There are only two. Um, and the first one is Mako. I love Mako. Um, lots of people were like, wait. You said there were two B&M Hypers. Are you saying that there's a B&M Hyper that you've been on that's better than Mako? Yes. Um, I love Mako um, so much. Uh, the reason why it's not even higher is just because it doesn't give me that stomach feeling as much as some other coasters do. Um, but I mean, it's my number six coaster, so of course it's awesome. Um, I love the drop. I love really every single element on the ride. It really pulls you over every single hill. Um, the last little bit, like the swoops, the overbank turn type of things, um, those are super fun. I actually prefer sitting back right. Um, that's, yeah, that's my favorite spot on Mako. Um, I rode it in that spot like a whole bunch of times. I think I rode it maybe five times in a row um, and I tried back left and it just wasn't as good in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I love Mako, great coaster, super, super, super re-rideable, um, which is definitely something that makes it deserve the spot this high up on my list. Number five is my favorite coaster in this state that it's in. Um, it is Cheetah Hunt. Um, it's the best coaster in Florida, in my opinion. Um, yes, better than Mako. Uh, the reason why I like it better than Mako, one, is because it does give you that stomach feeling on lots of the drops, um, as well as some of the, like, airtime hills and even some of the, t um, like, the little turns that it does. Um, it's super wild in some parts and super, I guess you could say, graceful in others. It does definitely interact with the scenery around it a lot, and it's super low to the ground in lots of the um, parts, which definitely shows off its speed. Um, the launches are super forceful. Overall, it's just such a fun and re-rideable ride. Um, and overall, I absolutely love Cheetah Hunt and definitely a great coaster to start off my top five. Number four is a coaster that um, I think will upset some people who agree with Logan from Coaster Kids. Um, when he did his, um, when he like rode this coaster, he actually said that it was super rough. Um, and not fun at all, and I 100% disagree. I mean, it's my number four coaster. Super re-rideable, super fun. It is Apollo's Chariot, which is better than Mako. Oh my goodness. Um, the reason why is because it gives me that stomach feeling um, on the drop as well as two of the airtime hills. Um, one, the one right after, like, when it goes into the mid-course break run, which basically does not slow you down at all. Um, when you go out of it, it definitely gives you a big pop of airtime, um, which gives you that stomach feeling. Of course, like I said, the drop, I already said that. Um, and then the last airtime hill, it kind of fakes you out a little bit and then goes down. Um, and that definitely gives you that stomach feeling as well. Um, and overall, I just love, love, love Apollo's Chariot. Um, I love the night rides that you get on it because you go through the woods, it's super dark at night. Um, the drop I think is better than Mako's drop mainly just because it kind of stalls you out before you go down into it, um, which I love, like the little pre-drop I really, really like. Um, and I actually saw the fireworks, at least like the second half of them from, um, from Apollo's Chariot, which was beautiful. Um, it was absolutely amazing. I absolutely loved it. Um, and overall, it was just a great ride. Um, I was able to get Last Ride of the Night one of the nights, and actually, while getting Last Ride of the Night, um, after we went into the station and the crew was so awesome, they actually sent us around again, which was great. So I kind of got like double Last Ride of the Night, I guess you could say. Um, and overall, it's just such a great ride. I love it. Um, like I said, super re-rideable. Um, relatively graceful, um, but with a lot of airtime. So yeah, let's get into the top three coasters. Number three is actually a coaster that I did not like for a while until I got back on it and then I loved it. Um, absolutely loved it. I think I rode it 
like seven times um, over and over again, just like, cause it, it rained. Um, so everyone cleared out of the park and then um, I got back on and pretty much like stayed on the train seven times and it was wonderful. Um, it is Intimidator 305 um, at Kings Dominion. I love this ride. Um, and like I said, I didn't really like it for a while. I thought it was too intense, too whippy, um, and I like graceful rides normally. So this is kind of a shock for some people that I really like this ride. Um, but I just think it's so re-rideable that it definitely deserves a spot in my um, top three. I mean, it's number three. Um, so yeah, great ride. Um, not really much theming, but that's okay. Um, the little gentleman start your engines is great. It definitely get, gets you hyped up for the ride. Um, and my favorite element on the ride is after you go down the drop, of course you do that big turnaround, um, which kind of prepares you for my favorite element. My favorite element is the airtime hill that goes under the lift hill. Um, but because you gray out on that first turnaround, you can't really see the airtime hill coming, so you don't really know when you're gonna crest the top of it. So it kind of gets you like by surprise, um, which of course gives you that stomach feeling, yay, um, that I love so much. And yeah, that's really why I love that coaster is just that big main element. Um, and the rest of it is super fun too. So yeah, now let's get into my top two. My number two, um, you can probably easily get from a couple hints. Um, this is a ride that lots of people don't really like. Well, lots of coaster enthusiasts don't like as much as I do. Um, they are like they just don't think that it's intense enough um and people don't think that it's just like lots of people make it number three at the park um that i that it's at and i think that it's number two um yeah i absolutely love this coaster i'm not even gonna say what it is because everyone probably knows it also there's a pov of it on the screen okay now it's it's millennium force um lots of people think it's forceless i don't think so um so <laughs> i love millennium force it's great uh, the drop is wonderful, the views that you get from the top are absolutely amazing, um, and then once you're in the ride, you can really feel the speed on it, all of the overbank turns are super fun. Um, the airtime moments, there are three of them, two main like floater to flojector hills, and then one little uh, ejector hill. Um, all of them are wonderful. The um, Every single one gives you um, that stomach feeling, even the ejector hill, which I wasn't really expecting. Um, yeah, I just love the ride. Um, it's so good. So, so, so good. And I think that people don't really give it as much credit as it deserves, in my opinion. Um, and it's something that I really, really look forward to getting back on um, a whole bunch of times whenever I go back to Cedar Point. Now, number one is pretty basic. Um, it is Steel Vengeance, something that people have started to say is not their number one anymore. Um, some people say it's their number 17. Wonder who I'm talking about? <clears throat> <clears throat> um, <laughs> which, I mean, okay, I kind of get it because when Logan, like, said his top, um, top coasters, I actually agreed with a lot of them, except for Millennium Force. No, it was like super low. Uh, um, anyways, um, but like, you know, I, I honestly do think that um, Voy the Voyage at Holiday World will be better than Steel Vengeance once I get on it, which I'm hopefully getting on at the um, beginning of June if the coronavirus isn't still um, a big issue because I'm actually hoping to go to Hollywood Nights. Um, which is something that I've planned, been planning on doing um, for a long time with Colton, um, and hopefully it doesn't get cancelled, but we'll see. Um, anyways, yeah, Steel Vengeance is great. Um, the reason why it edges out um, Millennium Force or Intimidator 305, or even Apollo's Chariot, Cheetah Hunt, and Mako, and even Twisted Colossus, is mainly because of the length of it. 
Um, actually, not really Twisted Colossus, because Twisted Colossus is, I think, like, just as... No, it's actually, Seal of Ventus is longer than Twisted Colossus, but still, um, I love Steel Vengeance, it's great, um, the reason why I like it, again, is just because of the length of it, mainly, um, overall, of course, it's not really classically my type of coaster, it has a lot of ejector hills, um, and really, the best, what, what most people say is the best part of the coaster is actually my least favorite element, and that is the Outer Banks turn. Um, it really slams like your thighs into the restraint, which hurts, in my opinion, and it's not super enjoyable. Um, but all of the inversions are great, the bunny hops are great, um, especially in the morning when they aren't really warmed up quite as much. Um, which, in my opinion, is the best time to ride it, but a lot of people strongly disagree with that. Um, but the reason why is just because they feel more like floater and flow ejector hills versus straight up slam you into the restraint ejector hills. Um, so, yeah, love Steel Vengeance. Definitely the best ride that I have been on. Um, and overall, it's just such a great ride. Um, but, I mean, it might change soon um if i can get to hollywood nights but i guess we'll see anyways that's going to be it for this video so thank you guys so much for watching um hope you enjoyed the video if you did smash the thumbs up button and also subscribe for more videos just like this one coming soon um this right up here in this corner is um my top favorites playlist this is my playlist with all of my top 10s top 20s all of that kind of stuff that um i am going to be having a lot more come out in the next upcoming weeks um and overall this this video was a great video to make um super fun especially i'm going to have a lot of fun uh watching people react to this video um that's gonna be great um so if you're going to react either dm me on instagram or just comment down below saying hey i reacted um and i really want really 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 want to watch it um so yeah great great uh list in my opinion i mean I, I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. I'm just going to sign out on this video. Okay. Um, yeah, subscribe. I think there's like little card things down here where you can like subscribe and see my last video and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, peace out. <laughs>